guys. So I'm catching up on my DVR shows and I just watched Married to Medicine. So let's get into this Mother's Day episode. First of all, they had Jewel Tankard on there. I don't know about y'all. When the Tankers first came out, I'm like, no, I don't ever want to see this show again. That was season one. But then they got a season two, and I'm like, okay, I think I like the Tankers now. Um, then I actually started liking the show, and then they didn't get another season, so I'm just like, well, where are they? Like, Because now I want to see what's going on with them. Um, I know why people didn't like them. They felt like they were not really religious material, I guess you could say. That's what the vlogs say. People's like, these not really holy people. They're they're they just about money. All their lectures and everything that they talk about is all about how to get money. It's not really a, about it's not a sincerity with God and so forth. But I, the show grew on me. And I really would like to see what happened when uh, the daughter went to college. Because in all honesty, I think the girl going to be out there. So I just wanted to see an update. But anyway, going on to the show. She did tell Dr. Heavenly the truth. And how many people do Dr. Heavenly need to tell her about how she acts? how she presents stuff to people, how she be carrying on. This your spiritual advisor. She Now she done told you the same thing the women been telling you. Other people have been telling you it, what everybody say. When you gonna get it? You hateful. You are mean and you are rude. There's no other way to put it. There's no way to sugarcoat it. That's it. Now, Dr. Jackie meets Cecil. First of all, I love my friends, but I ain't never going to meet my friend's husband for dinner. No way, no how, not today and not tomorrow. Not without them knowing that. I don't know if Curtis knew Cecil was meeting Simone, uh, Jackie, and if Simone knew Cecil was meeting, uh, vice versa. Where I come from and how I am raised, you don't do that. You don't go out with anybody else's man without them being present. It don't matter how close you're supposed to be. Nothing. None of it matters. Do you hear me now? Rich people do that, though, I guess. People way up there, sedity, bougie people do that. Mm -mm, we regular folks don't do that. So don't y'all go watching the show and get in your head that you need to go out and have dinner with your friend husband. No, honey, we, we don't do that in real life. So don't even try to pull it. That's for TV. I feel like that's just for cameras. I don't think realistically that stuff really be happening. I'm just being honest with you. I think it's just to show they just some for production. And that's that. But I'm glad that they did talk because... Dr. Jackie is, is is missing Curtis. I wonder how long it was going to take. It's soaking in now. They're not together. They haven't been together. They, She's missing his everyday actions. And I'm glad that she, you know, talked to him about it. And because, you know, that's his best friend. And who else to talk to other than his best friend about? I think, I feel like she just needed to hear reassurance from Curtis that he was really sorry. Like, I think from Curtis, she wanted to hear that, um, I mean, from Cecil, that she wanted to hear that Curtis was really sorry. He won't do it no more. And Dr. Jackie put out that she said it's only going to be one time. It won't ever be again. And I just feel like she was needing Curtis as a friend to reassure her that if she put herself back out there on the line, that it's not going to be any more BS. And she ain't going to have to go through that again. And basically, she want him to talk to his friend and be like, Look, man, she she going to talk to you. But now, you better not mess it up this time. Y'all know how y'all do when y'all into it with your man. And you want that friend to come through and talk on your behalf. Be like, you really need to talk to him because... 
somebody need to talk to him and tell him what's up. Cause I ain't playing now. I ain't gonna be putting up with it no more. I ain't about to be going through this again. Y'all know how y'all all got that friend to do that. But I feel like that's what she wanted. And it was good because see at the same time I feel like Cecil was doing the same thing with Jackie. Like, he wanted Jackie to talk to Simone on his behalf. You see what I'm saying? So, it kind of worked out. So, I guess it, it benefits people. And I don't think that it's a bad idea that they did it. Because they both did what they were supposed to do on, on their end. They tried to help each other out. And that's friends. So, I guess there wasn't nothing wrong with them meeting. Because they had a good agenda in mind. Like, teamwork make a dream work. So, I think as a couple, they'll all get back together. But anyway, so then we got Quad and Doggone Toya. At first, I was kind of feeling some kind of way. Because I'm thinking, well, I'm I'm not lying. I wasn't feeling some kind of way. I was like, yes, Quad, show Dr. Greggy that you you ain't depending on him. He want to he wanna play shady. He want to act some kind of way. Go on out and get your own place. Let him go take out the trash. Like like the daddy said on Friday. How uh, Uncle Willie said it. Take out the trash. Let him take out that trash. Wash them dishes. Clean up. Cook his own damn supper. See how he feel about them apples. That's how I was feeling. But then when she pulled up to that dealership and they came out with that pimped out G-Wagon that looked like half tank, half army, some another G-Wagon. I was like... And then I, then I just feel like the whole G-Wagon thing... When she was saying um, she's going to let her get this house, I think it was number one shade because she was mad at um, her husband, at Dr. Gregory. And she already said, he always talking about what she don't pay and all this kind of stuff. But she said, I pay what I'm supposed to pay. I pay my car note. I pay for the things that I want. I pay for, you know, the stuff that you don't, provide or what you don't get and I've asked you before if you know what bills would you want me to help you pay you said nothing then when we get into an argument you throw it in my face you pay for everything okay well then I can get my own vehicle and I feel like it was something else to make him matter to get a rise some feeling out of him not just a reaction, but feeling period from him. And then two, I think it was shade toward Mariah because Mariah said she was homeless and she lived out of her car. So I guess uh, Quiet say since her car is her address, that's her address is going to be baddest in the land. But she did. I don't like when production starts messing up shows. And I think Quiet was doing the most when she had the man and say, go over the paperwork part. Because when she said, uh, what was it? How did she say it when she asked him? Because I thought he was going to start rolling off uh, specs of the vehicle. He come talking about the price after taxes and all. We don't do that, quiet boo. That's messy. You don't do that. That's some tack head type shit. You don't do no mess like that. That Who does that? What? Everybody on reality TV driving a G Wag, they ain't got it pimped out with new shoes and red brakes, but they, as Toya say, but you was doing too much. Don't ever do that again in life. Like, don't act like you some bum, ghetto, bum, quisha type person. No, we don't do that. Then when Dr. <laughs> Greg called her on the phone, he was already on up here i'm like he gonna need to bring it down for me because you can't call me trying to spark no argument think you're gonna call an argument me on the phone if you wanted to talk to me you should have stayed there and talk you're not about to be calling me on the phone and think you still about to keep uh some mess going and then quiet gonna cut him i said now dinner might be late because she already know how her little oompa loompa is he gonna want that dinner cooked and ready and on the table <laughs> I don't even think nothing wrong. I'm going to be honest with you with Quad getting her own vehicle. Uh, I don't know why it would be a big, why Toya making it seem like it's such a big deal. She's like, shouldn't you call and talk to him about it first? Like, for my husband and I, we don't share a bank account. We've been together 20-something years, 23 years. We don't share, uh, share a bank account. A lot of couples don't share a bank account. You don't have to share a bank account or share money to have a 
successful relationship. I don't know why people think in their mind that if you a couple, you got to have, you do not have to share a bank account to be successful. Sometimes it's better for the relationship for it not to be shared. We don't share one and our relationship has been <laughs> great. But, um, basically like what she got a call and okay it with him for which now i ain't gonna lie if i'm gonna get a vehicle i'm gonna talk it over with my husband so i'm gonna sit and be like well i'm thinking about getting blase blase what you think about it should i get one should i get one but choir said when her husband went and got his little car he didn't call and talk to her so what she need to talk to him for so in that if that's the case then no Quad does not need to talk to him about getting a new vehicle. If he doesn't go to Quad and say, honey, I'm thinking about getting a new vehicle, what do you think? Then why does she need to go? See, that's my issue. Then why does she need to, if she's paying for her own car, then why does she need to go and ask? If he's not doing it, why she need to do it? It's got to be a 50-50 thing. You can't expect for her to do what he's not doing. Do you get what I'm saying here? Then Toya Mama came over. Toya Mama is really, really pretty. And out of the gate, I feel like some of Toya, a little bit of how Toya be acting come from her mama. The first thing she want to tell her mama is about her says, Girl, your mama and daddy don't want to hear nothing about your sex life. We don't want to hear about it. They sure don't want to hear about it. And they only appeasing it and going along with it for the cameras because they recording and they trying to help you out. But let me tell you, Toya, they don't nobody want to hear else about it. If you get it, you get it. If you not, you not. I wish somebody would send you a rabbit or a bullet. Y'all know what the little bullet, the little sex toy, the little bullet is. Look like a little li little lipstick tooth thing. It's on the cord and you put it on your persons and you turn it on. And get a girl a bullet or the rabbit. You know, the rabbit is the little dildo vibrated with the little ears on it to massage your personal little spot while you you know get get somebody get toy you want please somebody gift her one uh candy bedroom candy y'all y'all hear me anybody here said bedroom candy gift toy you sell toy you some stuff she needs some stuff so now let's get into mariah's mother's day bash she had mama lucy come out there in that big old heavy dress. You already know she can't walk. And you got her dragging that dress out there like Big Bird. You should have put her on something light. Where she can at least carry a walk with it. And you should have had on some kind of little. One of them little scooters. Or had somebody to bring her out or something. Because you see poor Mama Lucy can't even walk. And the crown done tilted over to the side like a pimp hat. The crown was on like this. Cause she was trying to hold the dress up and mama Lucy come out there and then still got the nerve to sit up there and have an attitude. How you know, how you got an attitude? I'm trying not to get on mama Lucy. So that's why I'm going to move on to the point of this whole video. Cause it's getting too long. Doggone miss Renee. It's some people that you can care certain places and it's some people you can't. Miss Renee is the person that you can't. Miss Renee need to be left at home. Miss Renee was sitting over there taking doubles, triples, quadruples, and just putting them back. Doctor <laughs> Tessa was scared of her. Instead of her just telling her, nah, that's enough, you know, slow down or whatever. She just let her keep going. You see the woman already insecure about being here because she feel like she, all of these rich people here, and she basically, her mind, all she keeps saying is, I'm just a nanny. Y'all are all doctors. So, in her mind, she's trying to figure out, you know, I guess she feel like she just low on the totem pole. Like, she's an idiot in a room with a bunch of smart people. But everybody there wasn't a doctor. Everybody's parents wasn't a doctor. Just some of the people was. Toya ain't no doctor. Everybody there wasn't no doctor. She didn't have to behave like that. And she just kept it coming. Got the nerve to tell me, y'all got some Chicago bounce music over there being loud and rude and obnoxious. You should, Dr. Contessa should have called her a Uber or a Lyft and sent her home way at the beginning before it even got moved to the inside. And I understand that she feel like that's her mama figure and that's the person close to it. At the same time, you got to know when to send her home because she was acting a fool. She was, she was drunk. Y'all see Dr. Contessa snatch that glass from her, talking about rolling her eyes. 
and she was steady putting it back. She was just rude and embarrassing. And like I said, she, she should have been put in the car and sent home way long time ago. Now, let me get on morale. Now, Quad tried to tell y'all about morale when y'all was in New Orleans. She told y'all that Mariah will apologize to you and turn around and stab you right in your back. She tried to tell y'all that when y'all was making up with Mariah. And all that trying to explain to Mariah, telling Mariah that, you know, once you forgive and move on and all of that kind of stuff and keep going back to it. And she was like, no, I like she don't do it and be over. What did she do? The first thing she did, she handed out these little tacky rewards. It's Mother's Day. You shouldn't be singling out people and handing out no tacky rewards. You should have had some kind of little something for the mothers. You should have had somebody singing them a song. You should have had some kind of tribute to the mothers. You shouldn't have been singling out people, giving out no rewards. First of all, that was tacky anyway. But then when you came for Dr. Heavenly, you see... This is what they was telling you. You don't never acknowledge what you do to people, but you keep on going on. You'll keep on going on if somebody do stuff to you. This is why they don't want to be friends with Mariah. This is why they don't trust Mariah. This is why they don't want to be around Mariah. And they tried to be nice and mend the fist and humor her by going to this little straw weight. How you say it? Soiree she was having in the first place. The, and, and it was gorgeous. The butterflies was giving me life. The little butterfly wall. Everything in the inside. They had it moved in so it could be cool and not so hot. It all, all of that. And then she she went on about how everybody needed to dress in yellow and white except her. She come out there with that dull tacky color on looking like a hot mess. That's why our dress was caught, caught in the door because it was ugly. It was just too much. And then Quad didn't show up. I didn't expect her to show up. And I don't know why she was expecting Quad to show up. Her mama mean and messy. She mean and messy. I wouldn't have showed up either. Then I told y'all in the last couple of reviews that Mama Lucy is why Mariah the way she is. Uh, mama Lucy got Mariah head jacked up to think everybody is uh jealous of her which they not but she got mariah thinking that number two her mama hateful she didn't talk the girl to be hateful she rude she didn't talk the girl to be rude she sit up there when when heavenly and i heavenly sincerely it was that was a deep heartfelt apology she sincerely apologized and then mama lucy over behind gonna say I can't accept it right now. Well, Dr. Heavenly, that's okay. Because I done told y'all before. I done told y'all in other re reviews. When we talking about the Real Housewives. God said for you to apologize. And if you apologize, once you apologize, it puts it over on that person. As long as you sincerely apologize. Dr. Heavenly done a sincerely apologize. It's over on Dr. Lucy. And if she was so godly, that would not have been her response. So... Keep it moving, boo. Them people crazy. You don't need to be surrounded by evilness anyway. Then, did y'all see this? Let me ask y'all. Did y'all see <laughs> um, Miss Renee sitting over there at the dude? And he said, I'm G-A-Y. And she said, She was over there trying to come on to the gay man. And he done shut her down. And I want to know what they edited out that she said before she was over there licking and smacking her lips. Because he looked real just like, I don't know. She had to say something else that they cut out. Because he was dis he had a disgusted look on his face before he when he said, I am G-A-Y. I'm just like. Is she that drunk that she didn't see that? <laughs> what? So one last thing before closing this video that I did leave out. That was um, Cecil admitted that he grew up in a household where they didn't teach love and affection. And he didn't know how, uh, really know how to say I love you and show his affection and emotion. And he said his son Michael says it all the time. 
I, I'm glad to see him acknowledging because, see, they were trying to make it look like Simone was overreacting at first. And I'm glad they showed it and now acknowledging that he had an issue. He was doing stuff that she really not getting love like she said. So, that's all of this review. I'm sorry that it was late. I will see y'all in the next review. And y'all enjoy. Today is New Year's Day. So I hope y'all all enjoying this first day of January, January 2018. And I'll see y'all in the next review. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe. And hit that like button and share with your friends. <music>